So you can effectively just kind of talk to the network. We like to call it like a, a network explorer that explores for you. I have one of my favorite people here with us today to dive into some of the things that are coming out of HCraft, particular their MCP server. Brandon, welcome back, buddy. It's so good to be back. And I mean, it has to be said, we've been going back and forth on Telegram for a while of trying to get on the show. We've both been so busy. You've just been killing it. Shark Bites has been crazy. So I'm so happy to be back and we've got a lot to talk about. Yeah, so much fun. So we'll just dive right into it here, Brandon. To start, can you just explain what this HGraph MCP server is? Great question. That's the question on everyone's mind. Um, another three-letter acronym and people's eyes roll into the back of their head. So MCP stands for Model Context Protocol. And you can think of it like the USB port for AI. Mm -hmm. um, so AI agents, um, you can think of them almost as like a super genius in an empty room. And if you go back to the first chat GPT, you could write song lyrics with it and do some fun stuff and ask maybe some old sports scores from the 1960s, but it didn't really know like what time it was, what was going on online. So when you give that super genius in that empty room, a clock or access to a computer to browse the internet or the ability to write some code, all of a sudden it can start to do so many different exciting things. And that's really where a lot of the innovations in AI have come from is giving these LLMs and these agents tools, right? And you'll see this if you use ChatGPT or Claude, you'll see, oh, I can add my Google Calendar or my Notion or GitHub. And so what the HGraph MCP server is, is it's a tool using this model context protocol that allows these AI uh, applications to connect to the Hedera network through HGraph. And so that's really what this is about is it's bringing the entire Hedera network to the AI apps that you already use every day. Um, so you can effectively just kind of talk to the network. We like to call it like a, a network explorer that explores for you. Well, let's dig into that a little bit further, both from like an individual user's perspective and from a developer's perspective. How can this be used? This is really interesting. Okay. So from a developer's perspective, so many builders, whether you're in the Hedera ecosystem, crypto, elsewhere, everybody's using AI now, right? And one of the big challenges, if we zoom back into Hedera, is if you're using AI to develop your Hedera applications, one of the most important aspects of your application from a user experience perspective is what are people seeing, right? Sure, you're putting stuff into the network, but what? how do you retrieve that information? And so you can spend a lot of time headbutting on trying to figure out how to retrieve that data, how to integrate it into your application. Um, and it's a lot of patchwork involved. But now if, for example, you're a developer using, um, let's say, uh, OpenAI's Codex or um, Claude code in, in one of your, your coding applications. Imagine now that you give it access to the actual network data so it can go and confirm what's actually happening. It can see what's actually going on and it can write those queries, integrate things into your application. It's kind of like with this HGraph MCP tool, developers are going from flying blind to now kind of having full vision into the network and full access to all those tools. So it really is a bit of a paradigm shift for builders. And then for um, retail folks or folks like yourself and myself that kind of are just curious about some things. Um, I'll give you a, good, a great example. Rob Allen, who you talked to, of course, Sharky Rob. Um, he asked me a favor. He was like, okay, so we had a big jump in account 0 .0 0.0.800 recently right? Hundreds of millions of HBAR, staking rewards. I mean, ah, hallelujah. But what actually happened? When did those transfers happen? How many of those transfers happened? How quick were they? What does that look like? And I worked with Claude Code and our MCP server and actually put together or it put together like a 35, 40 page report complete with graphs. Um, and I can give this to you uh, after we speak, but it put together a full report that I was able to provide to Rob. And he, you know, graciously uh, let me know I could share it with others. It was just so incredible to kind of see that what could be days of work trying to figure something out and get some answers about what happened. I was able to just do it my computer in, you know, 20 minutes, just going back and forth. And of course, to put something complex together like that, you do need knowledge. But if you're going to do something simpler, just kind of asking, you know, what happened on the network yesterday? Or what's this portfolio balance? Or what are the five most recent transactions for this HCS topic? Anybody can now get those answers, 
and verify them, which is amazing. Well, I had a similar interaction with you. We were wondering, you know, what were the spikes in uh, transaction volume that were mm. happening? And you came back and you did a little bit of digging in using your right. own server. And we found out that there was a hint, a breadcrumb, nothing definitive, but that it might have been coming from LG. And I followed up because it, then it allows, even though it's not definitive, it allows you then to ask the right questions. And I went back to Rob and he was going to the council member meeting this past week. He was going to check up and see if it actually came from them. So it, it gives you those little breadcrumbs that you can follow on down the line. But Brandon, let's make this even more real for people. Let's try this out and see what we can find. Love it. Okay. So I've got um, Claude Desktop open here. It's an app that I love to use. A lot of people use ChatGPT. I've been using this a bit. And if you go in and you have the MCP server connected, and for folks, if you go to hgraph.com slash MCP, I've got tutorial videos, step-by-step -step instructions, super easy to set up. Um, but you see, can see it connected here right beside, you know, all the different usual suspects. But let's try something simple. I want to see a fungible and non-fungible token portfolio overview for this particular account. Okay. And what we can do is that's just like any user would kind of type in. What it's going to do is Claude is going to say, hey, I need to look at my toolbox here and what tool can I use to get this information? And so the first tool that it's using is loading context for the network. And from an auditability standpoint, you can actually click and expand these in your LLM apps and see what data we are actually returning to your AI app to make it do what it's doing. So the next thing was, oh, here's, I'm going to query the account to get the portfolio. So you can see it wrote a GraphQL query, much like a human would for all sorts of different components. Here's the raw response that it received. So here's the stuff that makes no sense to people, right? But the yeah. magic is that now that the LLM gets this information right away, all of a sudden we've got all this breakdown of these different tokens and stuff inside of this wallet. Obviously they've got some GIB, we've got the decimals for that. We've got, you obviously got not enough sauce, not enough pack, in my opinion. <laughs> um, and then we've got some different NFTs. We've got HGraph Punks. I like the sounds of this one, Dead Pixels Ghost Club. And there's a particular one. I want to go tell me more about this NFT. In this one, they're obviously holding serial number 3046. So much like we're used to with LLMs, you can get conversational, right? And mm -hmm. When you think about traditionally how you would do this using something like hash scan or a REST API or GraphQL API, it would take quite a bit of time to kind of chip away and do this sleuthing, do this exploring. And with an LLM app like this, it kind of does it for you. That's why we kind of call it the network explorer that explores for you. And it's actually deciding to do some really interesting stuff here where it's actually decoding the IPFS URL. So in an NFT's metadata, You've got things like an image and, and all sorts of different aspects inside of an NFT. So basically it's, it's decoding some of that information on its own. It's deciding to look and actually browse the internet now for information about Dead Pixels Ghost Club. So we're seeing Very it cool. um, take on-chain data on Hedera, mix it with internet data, right? Things that are out there in the public and start to, to do some decoding and some data work internally. And here we've got the IPFS URL for the NFT. We've got details about this particular NFT. And then it's telling us, hey, here's how many NFTs are out here in the collection. Here's the total supply, some information from CentX about the NFT. And you know, to wrap this up, we could say, show me the transfer history of this NFT. <laughs> now, hopefully this has had a bit of a journey, but this is just to wrap this up. I just want to do one of my, my favorite activities with this. So basically what this is going to do now is it's going to go and find all the different hops that this NFT has taken over its life. And it's going to show us kind of a timeline of where this NFT has been, who has it switched hands with all these different types of things. And here is the transfer history. This is really, really cool how we've got a basic overview of this NFT's journey. But um, as, a, as a last little thing, this is where it can kind of get a little fun is now that we've got this conversation and this LLM, Claude Desktop, has all this information in our conversation, I could just break from the mold and say, write me a short poem about the journey of this NFT. This is where I see kind of almost full circle moments of, 
if you give creators and builders easy access to information like this on the Hedera network, I'm wondering what's going to happen when what we put into the network and the data that we use actually starts to manifest as collectibles and material on its own. I remember one of the tests that I did was I was looking at the, uh, the Bulbarian collections um, and all those different types of things and doing bubble maps for different yeah. stuff like that. So it's, uh, it's really interesting stuff. Um, and we, here's a poem, the, the ghost's journey. So I'm not, obviously we're not going to read this out, but we've got a beautiful <laughs> poem about the, the, the journey of this ghost um, in relation to, obviously it's referencing other things in our wallet th through three good homes before it found its rest. So a happy ending here on the H bar bull show with this ghost NFT, but um, yeah, I mean, data can be fun. Very cool. So uh, of course we, we can't really even comprehend all of the things that this kind of infrastructure will be able to facilitate in the future. This is just the tip of the iceberg, but I did have one thing that I wanted to ask you to check in particular, sure. because when we used to have Metrica, I was able to find which fungible tokens were most active based off of transaction volume. So I want to see if we can find like the most, uh, the 10 most transacted tokens on the Hedera network. You think what we can pull that off? The top 10 most transacted fungible tokens on the Dara network. There you go. And this is the fun part is I don't, I don't know. You know, these are, this is information where you kind of go, well, okay, did something like Metrica do some processing for this? Is this data available? Is it going to pop up? And this is kind of cool. The cool thing, especially for us at HGraph is I'm able to, um, internally iterate very quickly on gaps in the near node data. So if there is data that we want that isn't necessarily available, let's say, for example, like revenue or different things, I can go and we can start running the data science on that to make that data available. Mm -hmm. So we'll find out if this is available right now. So we've got wrapped HBAR, USDC, Dovu, Sauce, Karate, the usual suspects. Yeah. And, and we, we could do that. Uh, if, uh, we could probably break it down by week, so it could be useful totally. to my show. All kinds of different stuff. Brandon, you mentioned you have some tutorials. What would you say would be the first steps of people getting involved with this, both again from that individual retail perspective and from developers? Okay, for 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 the everyman, for the retail uh, person, I would say um, go to HGraph, create a free HGraph account, so you've got an API key. That's the most technical component you have to know. And you just go to hgraph.com slash MCP, like I said. You can decide if you want to use ChatGPT. You can decide if you want to use Claude. Um, we do support other apps, but just for the ease of use, you kind of go pick one of two lanes, whatever app you use, and there's simple instructions step-by-step -step to go and get it uh, plugged in. Um, and then for developers, this is an MCP server. Get a little technical here. It does support the streamable HTTP method. So if you have um, an AI app, that uses that method, you should be able to connect this MCP server to it. Now, depending on the platform you use, like ChatGPT or Claude, you do need one of their subscriptions, right? They're $20 a month subscriptions. But on our end through HGraph, it is a free API key. So there's no added cost for unlocking this, these capabilities. And as, as kind of taking it to a next step, we are, and I'll share a little alpha on the show here, we are working on our own agent, right? So taking it a step beyond just an MCP server that connects to existing AI apps, soon you're going to be able to go and visit the HGraph agent. And what that will allow you to do is just load a page, connect your wallet, and start connecting. So it's all about baby steps, but I think that the key thing that I want the Hedera ecosystem to know is our focus on HGraph is definitely about safety and letting everyone kind of come with us. And we thought that the best first step for us all to take together is to get this data in the apps that you're already familiar with and that you already use every day and get that experience in kind of that safe space. And then we're going to venture out together and do some, I think, pretty crazy stuff. Well, I'm excited about it. Brandon, thank you so much for building these kind of tools for the Hedera Network. Thanks for coming on today and telling us about it. And we have to have you back real soon. Right on. Thanks for having me, Brandon.